Hey guys, Profe Pablo here. Usually I don't put a disclaimer on my videos, but I felt like this one deserved one. Guys, today we are going to be building a raid farm. Now I pride myself on simple builds. This build is not super easy, but totally worth it. It helps me trade with villagers and having a sorting system down here at the bottom is also a great idea. Down here at the bottom, the mobs can't spawn on it and you get all of your emeralds right here. Hey guys, Profe Pablo here, Spanish teacher turned Minecraft engineer. Today we are going to be working on one of my absolute favorite farms, and that's a raid farm. I gotta give props to JC Plays. That's Plays with a Z. Maybe I should try that. Profe Plays Minecraft. JC Plays makes incredibly simple builds. They're awesome, and this one is no exception. I'm gonna make it a little more advanced by adding a sorter system. Let's get going. Step one, locate a pillager outpost. I'm in creative, so I get to do it this way. Ooh, we got one not too far away. 334, this way. That's, this is one of my favorite biomes. Oh my gosh. I need to write down the seed, look at this. Oh, right next to giant spruce biome. So cool. Okay, we have found said outpost. Man, this is cool too. It's got some lava pits. After you locate your outpost, make sure that it is a good ways away from any village. I see a village over there. This needs to be about a hundred blocks away. So I'm at 347. Okay, it's pushing it, but I think, I think we're far enough away. Next step, destroy all the pillagers. It might be smart to have a bucket of milk candy so that if you get the curse, that goes away. Okay, after you've taken care of all the pillagers, come up here to the top. If there's a chest in the way, go ahead and break that. And you're going to fill in this top part with glass panes on the second block up, like this. I like to build just straight across, and then from there, just build on that like this. Makes it easier. Aim directly in the middle. That's kind of a weird thing, but uh, aim in the middle of the next block, and that's how your glass panes will set really quickly. Okay, this is going to trap the pillagers when they start spawning, and we need to identify where their spawn point is. So we're gonna back up about 30 blocks, and wait. Houston, we have a problem. We have a stray pillager going on. We gotta take care of him first. This is a really cool world though. I like having a lake by a pillager outpost. Man. Okay, after a while, you'll notice that pillagers will spawn and they are spawning right here in this area. So now we're going to break all of these glass panes except for the ones that trap our pillagers. Looks like we have another spawn point going on. I'm having trouble identifying where it is. But if you have two points, you have to block off that as well. I think they're spawning somewhere over here. I've never dealt with this actually before. Yeah, okay, so we did. We have two spawn points. Uh, one down here, so we had to block that off, and one up here. So let's go ahead and deal with the one up here gonna go ahead and break these panes all around except for the one that's blocking these guys in there we go now these guys are standing on four blocks and one of these blocks is the southeast block which is technically the one where they spawn so an easy way to find southeast is to wait till sunrise the sun rises in the east so we know it's that way 
and north would be that way and south would be that way if you know your directions. So that means that this block is that block. I'm gonna go ahead and mark it with a different colored block. And now I'm gonna break all the other blocks that are underneath those guys, just like that. Then I'm gonna take some solid blocks and build up a square all the way around them. I'm gonna make the middle row glass so that I can see what's going on just in case I have any problems later on. For now, I'm just gonna leave a gap right here so that I can break the glass panes in a minute. Let me build up one more. And I'm gonna put leaves on the top so we don't have any mobs spawning here. That's gonna be really important throughout this whole build, using leaves to control spawning points. Now I'm gonna come down here. So this is where they're gonna fall. You can either put a four piston trident killer down here, but it's just as easy to do one. So what you do is you see where they're gonna drop down and then you come back one block, that's to control water flow. We're gonna put another block there, build back a little ways over here. There we go. So that the two back corners back here, um, we're gonna put water going this way and that'll make the water flow this way. Come around here to the side. If you have stairs in the way, break the stairs. There we go. And then we're gonna put a platform underneath. We basically want water pushing them into this corner here. Take a bucket of water, place it in the back corner and all the water's gonna flow here. Now to control the water better, we're gonna take a button and place it there. That's gonna stop the water. So these guys are gonna fall down through here. I'm gonna go ahead and cover this area up so that it's a tube. I'm gonna break this, fall down to the next level, and I'm gonna make a tube again. Again, if you have stairs in the way, you can go ahead and break those. Now, on one side here, and typically you wanna use the side where there's more space to build. You're gonna grab a piston, place it there. Let's go ahead and cover this up just like this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and fill out the corners of this tube. I don't want any problems, any glitching. Now I did forget one critical thing. And that is before you build this, you really need to take your trident and throw it at that piston. Taking the trident, throwing, placing down a block here. And you can use a slab here, but I like to use glass because I find when I come down here, the pillagers start shooting at me. I don't know why. So aggressive. Okay, here we are going to build a T clock. So build your T, break that middle block. You're going to need redstone dust, a repeater pointing into that dust, and then a redstone torch here. That starts your repeater clock. And we can turn that off here. Now, coming down to this third level, a lot of people build storage systems down here to collect the loot from these guys. I find that their loot is pretty worthless. So I do not want to do that. Instead, what I'm going to do is build a trash can that burns all their loot so it doesn't create lag. So find the block that is underneath your kill chamber. That's gonna be this one. Place a temporary block, crouch, place a hopper pointing down, take a dropper, also crouch. And if you can get the dropper on that hopper, you might have to break a block temporarily. There we go. It's a little dark down here. Let's light this thing up. Okay, now what you're going to want to do is make this whole area down here solid block, because if you don't, it's gonna catch on fire because we're gonna be using lava. So underneath this dropper, you're making solid blocks. And 
go ahead and add more solid blocks. Okay, you should have solid blocks. I'm gonna break an extra block, place another solid block, and place lava right there. I'll make this part glass so I can see what's going on. And now for our redstone. So somewhere close to this dropper, you're going to build out the platform, and you're going to place a comparator, a repeater, redstone, 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 and another repeater going back in here. That way, when you have items that are coming down through, they get spit out into the lava and consumed, and you don't have to worry about extra items and lag. Now, if you wanted to keep those items, what you could do is simply put a chest here instead of the dropper. But again, I find those items pretty worthless. What I'm going to do is just leave the trash can here. Take a rail, place it down on top of the hopper. Take a minecart with a hopper, and place it down because it's going to suck the items from the block above. Now you want to make sure this thing doesn't go anywhere, so you want to enclose it in blocks. Okay, and that should be good. Now, because we're destroying so many stairs, this gets, this gets a little tricky. A good idea is to use ladders. Grabbing ladders, going all the way up. And since it works out well and I'm not disturbing anything else, I'll go ahead and build this ladder all the way up to the top here. Okay, there we go. So now I have the spawn point, the place where they get pushed by water into one tube, the kill chamber, and the trash can. Okay, now I can come here and actually break the blocks where these guys are gonna be. And above the block where they spawn, I'm going to place a glass block and that's going to push them off this platform into the water chute. They come down here, we turn on our trident killer, they get killed, and we get a curse, which is exactly what we want. Now I have thought about this, if you want to get the XP, you could break this and get the XP. Um, I don't really care, so I'm going to leave that there. Okay, now from here I'm going to come out to the side where I can see the open sky. And you know what, I'm actually gonna do this away from the village, the village is that way. I'm gonna do it this way just in case. Now I'm going to build 30 blocks up. Okay, from here I'm gonna take leaves and build a platform out, giving myself kind of a couple blocks space to maneuver around. And this is where the next trident killer is going to be. It is a four by four area, so one, two, three, four. And then I gotta fill that in. And again, I wanted a two block area here where I could just walk around and maneuver easily. Okay, and I'm realizing that I actually made that a five by four. It doesn't really matter, but just so you get the visual, I'm gonna break those leaves. Place a piston here next to the corner, another one here. Another one here, and another one here, making this pattern. Now get some observers, place one looking at a piston, and then place the next one with the back going into the piston to power it. Do the same thing, looking into the piston, back going into the next piston, looking into the piston, back going to the next, looking in, back to the next. We're gonna go ahead and enclose this with blocks this is gonna prevent Ravengers from escaping later. And then let's go ahead and build these two more blocks up. Okay, right over here, you can close that in. Just leave a little area. I usually put two glass blocks. And then you can actually put a block here and then place a lever here. This turns the piston on once. And then if you turn it again, it starts the Trident Killer. Come back up here. And let's turn it off. Come back up here, take your trident, aim it at a piston, and shoot. Now that we're up here, we're going to build 18 blocks up. One, two. 
Go ahead and finish that tube all the way around. I know this looks hard and I'm doing it on creative so it's a lot easier. I have done this on survival, it's not too bad. Okay, once you have that, take eight blocks and build out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Come back over here, do the same thing over here. Once you're over here, build 11 blocks this way. Turn and that should connect you back to this other corner. And then fill in this platform. Build one block wall all along the outside. On the second row, take your stairs and place them down. And you want them just on those two outside walls, opposite corner from the drop chute. Go ahead and build up this wall. Okay, and just so we don't have any escapees, let's go ahead and make this a couple more rows high. You might be good with two rows high. I'm gonna put one more because I've seen Ravengers break the leaves off the top of this. They can break leaves. There we go. And speaking of leaves, we're gonna cover this top part with leaves. That way, we don't have any mobs spawning up here. That would ruin the raid farm. Take your bucket of water, place it one on each one of these stairs. If you need a video showing you how to have infinite water, there's one in the description in this video. Okay, this water should flow right up to the edge. If it doesn't, then you did something wrong. Now come over here and place leaves all along this part here so that no mobs spawn here. Then take some more leaves and build up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight blocks. Build a couple block platform here. Place down a bed. Break the two blocks underneath the bed. Do not put anything underneath this bed. If you do, mobs will see it as a solid block and they will spawn there. Go ahead and fill up this just like this. And what you want is to get a villager up here. Now that can be kind of tricky. The way I did it is I used a bubble elevator, which you could do pretty easily. Let me show you how. Come to the edge of where you want your villager to be. Jump straight down. We're gonna hit this, so we're gonna jump one more down. This block is where we want our bubble elevator to be. So I'm going to build a column of solid blocks all the way around that. All the way up to this level. Except I'm going to build one more high. I'm going to show you why in just a second. Okay, I'm actually going to have to break this leaf. Build this up. Except this one is not going to be one more high. It's going to be the same level as the leaves. I'm going to jump down here. I also need to build up the rest of this column right here. Dealing with the villager is honestly the hardest part of this build, but it is doable. Okay, and one more right here, all going around the center of where I want my bubble column to be. Now I'm going to take some blocks. I'm actually gonna build this up one more high because I don't want the villager jumping off. I'm gonna have to make these leaves in just a minute. I'm going to take a button and place it down right there and take a water bucket and place it down right there, causing water to flow towards this way. I want to take some kelp, jump down this tube, probably want to have some sort of respiration on your helmet or a water breathing potion and you are going to take the kelp and build it all the way up to the top. That is making all of those blocks source blocks Get back down to the bottom. You can build a couple of blocks here, a couple of blocks here. Break these two blocks and add buttons so you don't have water spilling out everywhere. Kind of makes a door. Break your kelp and add a soul sand block. And now you have a water elevator going up to the top. Now, if this were in survival, I'd be lucky because there's a village close by and I'd probably bring a villager over by boat. 
and he would be right here. And what I would do is take some leaves so that he can't escape and kind of temporarily build those around. There we go, now I can't get out. Break his boat and push him right into the elevator and then follow him up. Once you get up to the top, kind of push him in. And then what we are going to do is wait for nighttime. Okay, when it's night, he's gonna fall asleep. Now, you don't wanna add blocks right above him because when he wakes up, he'll spawn on top. So we're gonna make one more row just like this. And then right there. So he has a one block gap and then some more leaves. Now we're gonna go ahead and block this water here. Jump, do that. You don't want mobs spawning here, so you wanna put leaves. But I've also had mobs kind of see this as a place to spawn, so I just add extra leaves so that they definitely don't spawn there. I leave the elevator just in case something happens to my villager in the future. I have a way to get another one up. Now we need to come down here and put leaves all over this so that no mobs spawn here. Usually I come down here and I also put leaves everywhere. Now anything past this, underneath this, you should be good, but if you do find that mobs from the raid do spawn down here, then just cover it up with leaves. But first I wanna test and make sure this thing is working. So I'm gonna come down here. To get this thing going, you turn this on. Okay, after you turn that on to get those guys to spawn again, you actually have to come back up to the AFK platform, which is up here. And you are 30 blocks away from them, so it should work fine. I'm gonna go ahead and add some leaves here just to make me feel safer. And I might even add like a little rail here. Okay, I think we have a problem. Um, I'm not getting the curse, and I think that's because I have two spawn spots. Okay, guys, we actually have a problem with the build, and that is that the captain sometimes spawns in this secondary place. So we're gonna have to make a kill chamber here as well. It's not too hard. Um, I've already made part of it. I'm just gonna go ahead and break out these blocks here. Same setup as the one above. I'm just gonna jimmy rig in this one if Jimmy Rig is a phrase or a word. Okay, our kill chamber seems to be working. Just gonna throw some glass here so we can see our trash can in action. Get back up here to the top and kind of cover this up so I don't fall in. Good, so now we have a kill chamber that'll kill the captain there and over here, starting the raid. Then we kill the raid mobs in here. Now all we need is a collection system. You can kind of see through the leaves, but come under the block where the leaves are. Place down a temporary block, another temporary block, and another one. On top of this temporary block, break that. If you're doing this on survival, you'll need scaffolding and you'll be fine with that. Place a hopper going down. Place a rail. Place a minecart with a hopper. Place leaves going all the way around this thing so it doesn't move. And then here, underneath this, you're going to place a dropper. Okay, once you have that dropper in place, place a block here, place another block here, and then build a tunnel all the way around, just like this. Build out a platform. Let's go ahead and do our repeater clock. Comparator, repeater, redstone, 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 redstone. Then repeater going back in. Now there is the potential that mobs could spawn here. So you either want to build up the blocks until they reach the ceiling in front of them like this, or you want to cover them with leaves. Now I'm gonna opt for the ceiling that way there's absolutely no way that their mobs could spawn here. Get 
Okay, now if we did everything correctly, when we throw something in here, it should start spitting it out, and it should all drop relatively in the same spot. Looks like we're gonna need to make this tube just a little bit longer underneath. Again, not a problem, and uh, if you have scaffolding, this should not be an issue. I'm gonna make it two more blocks lower. Okay, let's test that again, making sure all our blocks fall into the same area. These blocks seem to be the area that I did not like the way that they were falling everywhere. What I'm going to do is build a tunnel all the way down, or I could drop down to the bottom and build all the way up. I'm making mine out of glass so I can see what's going on. Now, what we are going to do down here is create an organizational sorting system. So I'm going to clear some space. So as you can see, I kind of built out a platform here so that I can have my organizational system. Now what we have to do is divide this into a filter for non-stackable items and then filter out every kind of stackable item that we like and then add a trash can on the end to get rid of items that we don't care about. To do that, we're gonna come over here, crouch, place a hopper. This is the non-stackable item filter. We're going to break these blocks and notice that this hopper was three blocks up from the ground, one, two, three. I'm gonna come back here, build a couple blocks. That way I can add a comparator there. I need to build one, two, three, four blocks this way. Put two redstone dust, place a redstone torch. Down here underneath the torch, place redstone. After placing redstone dust there, build out this bottom, break this block, and place a redstone repeater going back in there. Place down a double chest, just like this. Place down a hopper. This is going to be non-stackable items like totems and iron and all that stuff. Okay, I want another chest that's going to be for emeralds, and then another chest that's going to be for all other stackable items. From here, I'm going to build up some blocks. Three blocks high, take my hoppers, and lead them all the way back to this hopper. I'm gonna break that block. Oops. While I'm back here, I'm gonna make sure that my tube is not broken. There we go. Okay, these chests actually need to be moved out. One right there. There we go. I'm going to place a hopper going into those chests, just like that. Behind these hoppers, I'm going to place a block, a block, and a block, just like that. Place a comparator, a comparator. Redstone, 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 redstone. Down here, I'm gonna break these blocks. Break this one. Place down a redstone repeater. Break this one. Place down a redstone torch, which goes right underneath this comparator, just like that. I'm gonna do the same thing over here this block, place down a repeater, break this block, place down a redstone torch. Okay, you should have two clocks that look something like that. Take a hopper, crouch, and to aim at the side of your comparator, it's kind of tricky to do, you gotta get that crosshair just right. That's going to point your hoppers into the comparators. And now in these middle hoppers that point into the comparators, you need place holding items. So choose an item that's never going to go through the system. I know for a fact that furnaces will never go through this system. Place down one in each of these slots. And then in this first slot, raise it up until it hits the number 41. 
Oops, I went too far. I did 42. There we go. Now, I want this to be my emerald organizer. So I'm going to place one item here and then another emerald. That's two emeralds total. That pushes one through the system down into here and keeps one in there. This will only filter out the emeralds. And then everything else should go into here. And in fact, <laughs> because of that, I actually don't even need this clock. So I'm gonna take this chest, move it up here. And then I'm gonna put one right here. And one right here. I can take my hopper, put one there and put one there. Okay, the last thing I need is some sort of flushing system so that when this is full and there's nothing else that I want, I can flush everything out and start fresh. Let me take a hopper going into here, break out some blocks, take my dropper, have it facing out, take non-flammable blocks, Place them down, just like this. Take my lava, place it there. Take my glass, place it there. Now I just need to do my redstone. This is all going to vary depending on the terrain that you have. There we go. Comparator, repeater. Redstone, 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 repeater. Now everything that goes there will be sent into the trash can to burn. I'm gonna go ahead and cover this up as well so I don't fall in. Now over here, I'm gonna do the same thing. And if I just wanna be a little lazy and I have plenty of iron, what I could do is hook it up over here to this trash can, which is what I'm going to do. One, two, five, there we go, six. Now, what we have right now is that these trash cans are active. In other words, whatever gets pushed into here is automatically going to go to the trash can. So we need to turn that off. The way you do that is put a lever next to the hopper, turn it off that way. We're gonna do the same thing over here, just like that. And actually, I'm gonna break this. I wanna make this just a little bit bigger. Have a little bit more storage because there's a lot of single items that come out of there. So I'm gonna put that there. Put a hopper going into there like this. Oops. And then go ahead and place a block here with the lever here. That's gonna be our flushing system. That way I have two chests for single items. After you are done with all of that hard work, you can Turn on your switches down there, come up here. Raids will start once you get the curse and you should keep on getting the curse because mobs down below are getting killed. I had to build up a couple leaves here because I was one block away and I can AFK here. Notice I'm getting the curse, more mobs are coming in. I'm holding a looting three swords so that I get those benefits and we'll see our organizational system at work in just a minute. Okay, everybody, I've been doing this for a little under 10 minutes. I uh, just did a couple of raids. I'm gonna turn this off. Hop down to the bottom, see how our organizational system is going. Okay, down here we have almost a full double chest. And what I like to do is have just kind of a chest sitting close by. And what I will do is pull out all of the items that I really, really like. And then come over here and put them in that chest. Oh yeah, Frostwalker, are you kidding me? 
And then everything else that's left, if I don't want it, all I have to do is turn on the switch and it starts going over here to my trash can, getting burnt up, not taking up any more space. I do suggest only having one trash can on at a time. We'll wait for this to finish flushing out. Turn this back off, come over here. We got three stacks of emeralds in just a matter of minutes. And then over here we have the rest of our stackable items that we got. Again, if we don't want those, we can turn on the switch and they will get shot through the trash can and destroyed. Guys, that was a lot of redstone, a little bit of a complicated build, but trust me, this is so worth it. This farm has been a lifesaver in my survival world. I hope you guys enjoyed this build. Thanks for bearing with me through this video and thanks for watching.